This conference will now be recorded. So, Jack, how long have you had sarcoidosis? I was diagnosed with it probably about 20, 25 years ago, but I've never really had any real issues with it other than uh, pain. And, and that's what kind of uh, keyed me into, I was going to go back to my original doctor who diagnosed it, but he's kind of gone concierge, so I uh, couldn't get in. But the person told me that, I guess, runs his office about this site. Apparently, someone in Tucson either belongs to it or has something, a site like it or whatever. But she's the one that gave me this heads up. Oh, on good. This. So I was interested in finding out, I guess, the what other people are going through with it. I mean, I, I things I read about it, it's a lot, like you said, about lungs and things like that. Mine's not. Oh, but lungs. so much more. Yeah. So that's the reason why I kind of wanted to know. I see someone else arrived, so that's good. Yeah. Hi, Karen. Can you hear me okay? No. <laughs> you can't hear me? I just am now. Okay, good. Well, welcome. Is this your first time on the call? Yes, it is. And uh, if you would like to uh, sign up for the distribution list, you can put your um, email in the chat. Okay. And we'll put you on the distribution list and you'll get a reminder uh, before every session. Great. Thank you. Where are you from, Karen? I'm from Idaho. Idaho? Nobody's from Idaho, right? Potatoes, right? <laughs> potatoes, for sure. Originally North Carolina, but I live have I'm almost a native from Idaho now. Yeah. And um, how long have you had sarcoidosis? Well, I was just confirmed six weeks ago. Oh wow! But I. But it has taken me a good three years after my pacemaker when I only got worse after the pacemaker and I knew something was going on. And locally or another hospital, doctor's university I was going to, and it went nowhere. So I ended up at the Mayo Clinic and it was suspected my first visit and in four months time, I have gotten there, gotten treatment, and, and just in the last week, I feel the best that I have in probably five, six, seven years. Wow, that's a, that's a long journey. Can I ask a question? It is. Sure. What kind of treatment do did they give you? I guess, I don't know about the, all the different kinds that, for sarcoidosis. Well, I, the little I know and realize I'm just learning a lot about it. I feel like they started me like they do most people on prednisone. Yep. Yes. And okay. so I'm taking prednisone. I started out with 40 milligrams. I am down to 20 now, which I will stay at until I go back to the Mayo mid June. And of course with, with that, I'm having to also take an antibiotic. Mm. Okay. No, I I yeah. heard I read that recently that they're recommending an antibiotic with steroids. I, I so um, a little bit about me. Um, I've had sarcoidosis probably my whole life. Um, I was positively confirmed diagnosis in 2010 when I had a lump in my right ring finger. And it was interfering with my golf game. So something had to be done. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I agree. Uh, I mean, I, I had watched it and, you know, played with it and tried to figure it out, thought it was a cyst and benign. It was never any pain. But then in 2010, it was getting a little bad. So, um, yeah, they did, just did a biopsy and my uh, 
hand doctor said it was like pulling spaghetti out of the palm of your hand. Man, I was like, oof. And they said it was sarcoidosis, but that's a lung disease. So go see a pulmonologist. Uh, we did, and they did a biopsy, and sure enough, I had it in my lungs, and it was very stable for 10 years. Never had any treatment. Um, most impact on my life was a little tiny bit of lung function. Um, so I, I've been athletic most of my life, and um, I noticed it riding on the riding my bike on the trail or playing soccer with um, you know a bunch of coaches or whatever. I, upon exertion, I would start to feel you know, a little bit a little bit tight, a little bit wheezy. Uh, but you know, had a successful career, moved around the world, you know, all of that, and it never really had any impact on me until 2020. I was in a motor vehicle accident, and three days later, I felt like I had just been run over by a, a steamroller. I just everything hurt, uh, um, brain fog, and like really bad fatigue and malaise and I showed up and I was an AFib. You were in what? Atrial fibrillation. Oh, okay. My heart was going 100, 220 beats a minute in circles. It wasn't doing much. That's why I was so feeling so Excuse bad. me, I'm having to move rooms. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, I'm on a live sarcoid thing. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> So the, uh, we went on this kind of fast paced discovery of, uh, you know, doing a heart catheterization, heart imaging, and the end of the line was, um, actually the arrhythmias were so bad that they put a pacemaker in right before the pandemic. You know, it was in April and they're like, you know, if you go in in June, you know, we don't know where the pandemic's going to be. And we think we might be able to get you in tomorrow and I'm like, get it approved and I'm gone. And uh, so I had the pacemaker put in April. I had a PET scan, which is a type of imaging study where, uh, Karen, have you had a PET scan? Yes, I have. So it's a CT scan. And it's also a radiation scan. So they, um, you, you do it like a keto diet, like no carbs, no sugar, fasting for the last 12 to 24 hours. Okay. And then they hit you with um, sugar. It's radioactive sugar. And as it decays, and as it decays, it gives off imaging. So wherever there's inflammation in your body, it pulls in the sugar and my heart lit up like a Christmas tree. And I was like, wait a minute. Before the accident, I felt fine. Here, four months later, it's just totally involved in my heart. This doesn't make sense. So I did a lot of research and, you know, I, I guess I was told it was quiescent and would probably never be back, but they didn't understand what was going on. Because it, it never went away. It's kind of sat there in the background, smoldering and, you know, kind of moving around in different areas. And um, I think the motor vehicle accident was a major contributor. I think my heart got concussed. It was hit from behind. I was stopped. So, you know, a lot of impulse and force and the seatbelt and the steering wheel. Uh, I think my heart got concussed. And that kind of set it off. And then by the time we did the PET scan three months later, it was you know, well established. So that was my first time to get any kind of treatment for this. And so it was, your PET scan was in 2020? Yes, April 2020 was my first one. Okay. I uh, started 40 milligrams of prednisone. Uh, they tried methotrexate as a steroid sparing agent. Mm -hmm. And my liver did not like that at all. Um, so I wound up on Celsept, and then I tapered the prednisone from November of 20 through July of 21. So real slow. Okay. Like five well, milligrams every two weeks, and then, you know, less than that. And finally, it was like, you know, take a one milligram and, and nothing. And one milligram and nothing, and then stop. <laughs> it was real slow. 
But I, it, it, it was awful. It was worse than any part of the disease. I was going to ask you about the methotrexate. Um, I took it for I three did. days and my liver enzymes went through the roof and they called me and said, don't take it today and don't ever take it again. Throw it all out. Oh, it's so bad. My husband, okay. and this is a total different, you know, thing. He has two autoimmune diseases and he did methotrexate for about four months and it almost killed him till I finally said, you know, no more. So they had talked to me about when I come back, putting me on methotrexate. And I said, no, that's not going to happen. It affects everyone differently. It does. Some people and tolerate maybe it well. Hard, but after you got to find something. Went through... <laughs> well, you know, so, the. well, that's my next step. I did the prednisone and gained a ton of weight. I, I looked like one of those toads that had the second, you know, when they puff out their chin and everything. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I'm on my way back. But the next step is methotrexate. The question I was going to ask, though, is uh, when I first uh, had or was told I had sarcoidosis, I had a little bit of pain and stuff like hips and legs and things. Mm -hmm. But it has now progressed to the point where it's extremely painful. And I mean, I've been taking hydrocortisone for probably 20 years. But now I'm taking pretty high doses of it to ease the pain. I was wondering, is that something that others that have sarcoidosis goes through? I mean, pain like in your body. Um, I never had any pain before 2020. And you threw in an accident, the uh, prednisone and uh, muscle wasting. You know, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even ride my bike for a mile in the worst of it barely even get out of bed some days. Right. Um, I had two falls because I just wasn't strong enough to recover from missing the curb or, you know, whatever. And I fell on both shoulders and somehow for whatever reason, the, all that immune suppression, the healing process got all gummed up and I have really bad pain in both of my shoulders. And coming off of prednisone, uh, my back pain, my hip pain, I had restless leg syndrome, almost like plantar fasciitis. It was like something different every couple of weeks. It was mm -hmm. bizarre. And all that cleared up, uh, except for the shoulder pain. I ended up getting shots in January after like eight, 10 weeks of PT. It, it slightly improved, but like, you know, it's... Uh, it's arthritis. I'm like, really? And apparently, sarcoid arthritis is a thing. You know, very often it's a what they call comorbidity. Mm -hmm. Um, and fatigue and mm -hmm. pain syndromes. Like I, they call, they said, oh, you got fibromyalgia. I'm like, right. My mom had fibromyalgia. I know what that means. <laughs> but no, it's a real thing. You know, you can get pain in all kinds of different areas. And... Oh, it's real for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 How about you, Karen? Did you have pain on yours? Was that something that tipped you off to it? You know, no, what tipped me off was really and truly AFib. And mm -hmm. it was after the pacemaker, the AFib got so much worse. And the first time I was at Mayo was in December. I, my family and I went to Mexico for a month. My husband had some dental work done. So we were there for a month. The whole time I was in Mexico, I had, I, and I was up to having eight to 10 episodes a day before we went. I had three episodes the whole time in one month. So I talked to the specialist after the fact, and he said, oh, it's a real thing. The altitude can really affect, you know, what you deal with. So the AFib got just worse and worse. And then, and fatigue, the fatigue was probably as much, they, they were just hand in hand. Yeah. Fatigue when you're in AFib, you... AFib, you you're not getting blood flow and you feel very tired. No. And so, and, and I did occasionally have some, some chest pain, 
some heart pain. The first time I actually, it was on Mother's Day, and this was actually six years ago, I went to the hospital because of chest pain. And now I look back, and I'm sure it was all, all just part of it. So do you have it anywhere else in your body? Do you have it in your lungs, Karen? Um, the, it is suspicious, but right now the nodes are so small that the doctor did not want to test it. But I am having another PET scan in June, which is only, you know, three, three months after I had the last one. Yep. So they're being very cautious with it. Um, I have a real hard time with, I used to, up until six years ago, I walked, I did the treadmill, I did at least three miles a day. And now a set of steps just does me in. So I hope not, but it's suspicious. So does your um, pacemaker also have a defibrillator function? <laughs> No, it does not. In fact, the doctor felt like I probably, they were going to do a heart ablation mm -hmm. eight weeks ago and change out my pacemaker to a defibrillator. They got in there and they could not get the episodes to sustain long enough to map them. So they could not do the ablation. And at that point, they decided not to put it in a defibrillator because they felt like, or they came to the conclusion that the sarcoidosis is what is causing the AFib. So to start treating me for the sarcoid, they thought I had, they were like, oh, you've got two different things going on. So no, I do not have. Okay. Yeah. So I when it was active in my heart, I was getting a lot of arrhythmias, especially if I was active. Um, but they put the ICD in because you know it, if you're in atrial fibrillation, a pacemaker doesn't help. <laughs> no, not at all. But do you know now? And I'm very, very thankful. I am down to one episode a day, and Sunday I didn't have any. So, yay, I think the prednisone's doing wonders for me. You need to do go like this and knock on wood. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Hold my breath as I say that, right? So do you, Kevin, you have it in your lungs. How widespread is it in your body? Um, so I, I know I've had it in my skin. I have a pocket of it in my palm because that's where they first found it. And that kind of shrinks and swells based on diet and stress and uh, whatever. Um, they found it in a lymph node in my uh, groin area. So that was in 2010. Um, and that no, was in 2001. I just come back from Singapore. Um, and I went camping with the Boy Scouts and I had what looked like an asthma attack. And, and that could be the inciting event where I was first exposed to an antigen. I was sleeping in a really old cabin on an even older cot, like World War II type cot. You know, Boy Scouts, they, they always replace everything every year. Not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, and it was really cold. I didn't have the right equipment and the right gear and woke up in the middle of the night, like freezing. I pulled the uh, sleeping bag around me and got off my pillow and was face first into this 50 year old mat. that was nasty. And I like two in the morning, I couldn't breathe. And my son had some lung issues very early on. So he's asthmatic and always carried an inhaler which saved my life, probably. Went to see an asthma specialist and, you know, blowing out the candles and PFTs and um, doing oral steroids for a couple of years, didn't help anything and never thought about it again. When I had the lymph node biopsy, they came back and said, it's not cancer and left it. Oh. 
And when we look back at that 10 years later, it was very consistent with what you would expect to see with a sarcoidosis biopsy. And so that was probably the first chance that they missed it. But I can go all the way back to childhood where I had constant throat infections, tonsils had to be taken out, I had ear tubes put in, um, hearing problems. You know, so there's something going on in the ears, nose, throat area for the first decade of my life. Okay. And, you know, the medicine back then isn't quite what it is now. Not quite. But yeah, I was always active and athletic, so you know, it didn't bother me. But so yeah, I could sit there in the background, could be quiet for a long time, and then decide it wants to give you a bad day. That's my takeaway from it. You know, they, they told me not to worry about it and live my life, and really, um, I probably would have been better served listening to my body slowing down, de-stressing my life, and eating better. But that's all hindsight. Of course it is. But now yeah. you know. Yep. I'd learn the Jack, hard way. About, Jack, where do you have? Well, I have a, I had a question. Um, I did the, the scan and all that, and there were lesions throughout my body. So the question I thought I had for all you all was, um, if you had the lesions first, and then after you've taken the, the medication, which I know now you haven't taken methotrexate, but I don't know about Lewis, I think it is. Is it Lewis? I don't know hey, if Linda. you methotrexate. So I guess the, I'm wondering because they're pushing this methotrexate. And what I wonder is after the uh, prednisone, nothing changed with me. I went actually the pain and everything is right back. So before I do the methotrexate or anything like that, I'm assuming that this pain that I'm always in goes away after the medication. It depends or, on what, in my opinion, you know, so first of all, none of us are doctors here. Yeah. Um, it depends on the source of your pain. Uh, if the source of the pain is the granuloma pressing on a nerve, which can happen, um, then it may get better. Hmm. If the source of the pain is, you know, something different, there's a lot of different reasons people have pain. Um, you know, the, the treatment may not help at all. Mm -hmm. with, with me, everything I was experiencing, mostly the, the fatigue and um, the brain fog and, you know, it, at one point, I kind of built a matrix of like side effects and medications I was taking because I was on 13 different medications at one point. And half of those medications were to treat the side effects of prednisone and self sept And, you know, so I was taking stuff from my stomach. I was taking a mood stabilizer, antidepressants. Um, it was quite the cocktail. I threw some Plaquenil in there because you know, there was a pandemic and that's, it's a prophylactic and it helps with sarcoidosis. I'm like, it's a twofer. Um, all of those symptoms, as I weaned off the medications and things have stabilized and I improved my diet, um, I would say most of that has gotten better. Um, if I overdo it, overexert myself, like I did this weekend, then, you know, Monday's a, a down day for me. I went for a couple of long bike rides and um, felt great about it. But, you know, just Monday I was like really fatigued. I think so. that's what I'm feeling today. I had a great day yesterday. I was outside working. I went nonstop for about 12 hours. And today, yeah, I'm done. Mm -hmm. So um fatigue is a tough one jack have you ever had fatigue if i don't take the hydrocodone pretty much can't really do much of anything once i take it i'm out golfing i'm out i volunteer at the dog shelter walking dogs and things like that so there's plenty of energy it's just just the opposite of what some of the happens to some people but for me it gives me a ton of energy so 
I've been on it for 20 years and that seems to be what helps. But I, what I want to do is take whatever they're telling me so that I don't have to take that to have the energy. And I, I'm not sure it. that's the, the way that works. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm on Meloxicam, which is a NSAID. It's, it's not a, um, opiate, uh, mm -hmm. and it's been helping. It's a, just a general anti-inflammatory and all those little dings from soccer and whatever. Um, they all kind of just melt into the background. And I get on with my day. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can say for, for me, that when the sarcoidosis is active, when I mean active, I mean it's actively producing all these immune system molecules to wall off a real or perceived uh, antigen in your body. Um, it gets out of control. And just that process of making all those molecules consumes a lot of energy. Mm. And so for me, that was like one of the, you know, it, it, again, it was my experience. Um, now, when I had the AFib, right after the accident, I was also terribly fatigued. But then again, I was just in an accident. I was, you know, healing all sorts of soft mushroom tissue and, um, you know, just trying to get better. But, um, yeah, so I, I don't know if, if you take methotrexate, that's going to treat the pain at all. Mm -hmm. And if hydrocodone works for you, I'm not sure I would stop taking Do it. it. <laughs> well, I'm not stopping it. That's at all. I mean, not after you've been on it for 20 years. Yeah. You really can't. I mean, I did stop it one day. Like I said, I'm not doing this. You almost went into like a coma or something. You just, you just don't stop that, that drug like that. Nor prednisone. Like there were times when I'm like, I can't take my prednisone anymore. It's driving me crazy, literally. Um, I thought you couldn't and, be on prednisone like long term. They don't recommend it. I know a lot of people that are on like five milligram maintenance because yeah. all the other cocktails that they have for this drug uh, will keep it at bed. So prednisone is very good at what it does. Mm -hmm. It knocks out the inflammation. But there's a whole host of side effects from weight gain and diabetes and bone loss and, you know, all the I psychiatric the effects. Yeah. Um, you don't Roid want rage. Your Roid rage, yes. I was an impossible person to be around when I was on steroids. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I listened to um, the Pod Fighter podcast. The Sark Fighter podcast. His name's John Carlin. Um, and he had a doctor from the UK on. He was an Indian guy. And he was talking about the devil's chicklets. <laughs> that was his name for prednisone. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to nick that. <sighs> Linda, how are you doing today? Excuse me one you. minute. I'm going to have to leave for a minute. I hope you're here when I get back. Oh, we're, we'll be here for plenty I, of time. Good. I, this has, I will be back. I just hope you're there. Oh, give me your best Arnold Schwarzenegger. I will be back. I will be back. <laughs> See you soon. I'm just going to leave this on if you don't care. That's fine. Yeah. Hey, you can look at. My headboard has that. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Linda, how are you doing these days? You're on mute. There, you're off. I still can't hear you. I'm not hearing Linda either. Oh. No. 
Do, do you have laryngitis? <laughs> Is your mic I, plugged I in? It might be your Is microphone. I, I, we, just, we just can't hear you. I'll come back to you. Hey, Wendy, how are you? Hi. Um, hi, Jack. My grandfather's name was Jack, and I adored him. Mm. Good name. I just, good start. <laughs> I just, um, yeah, his name was Jack Brody. He was one of a kind. Um, I just uh, went to my pulmonary doctor um, at the Star Clinic, and we were talking about, because I have transgenial, the sarcoid's like in my cheeks and my face, you know, in my parotid and my thyroid. <clears throat> but my pulmonary is really good. It's only on the outside of my lungs. It's not in the inside. So that's a good thing. But I asked if, because, um, you know, I had the brain bleed and I, because of paragenital, I had, the, I have the palsy in the face. I asked if I could have a, um, a, a you know, a facelift because, uh, you know, to be honest with you, um, I don't like the way my face looks anymore. Mm. And they told me there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm going through a lot of grief. Um, because, you know, I, I miss, you know, I don't look like I am smiling at people anymore. I miss, cause I used to always smile at people. Um, and I can't, you know, even when I go to see my nephew's baby, it looks like I'm crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm, you know, like it's hard for me to do this. See what I'm doing right now? Mm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so I said, uh, well, do I need any treatments? And he said, no, not, you know, unless it starts, you know, affecting your brain again or going into your, um, you know, your heart. So yeah. I said, well, what about, you know, the paralysis that I have in my body? You know, I can't feel my right leg. He, they said that will never return. That the sarcoid you know, it, it, it did something to my body all over, yeah. you know? So it's, it's like, I'm under, you know, just about trying to process it. And, uh, you know, in a, it's a grief, it's a, it's a grieving process because your body's yes. not the way it used to be. Right. Right. Yeah, um, you can't do what you used to that, do. All right. Not Absolutely going, feel it. not going back to work, doing anything, volunteering. I can't even volunteer, so that's another thing that bothers me. You know, I feel like a loser. Um, oh, but but I I I I don't feel you know I don't feel attractive to my mate. You know, he's got to look at my face. He says, "Oh, it's fine. I don't care." Blah blah blah. You know. Um, but the good thing is I'm going to water aerobics and that's working out really good because I'm getting a lot of muscle back in my legs because the prednisone just destroyed my muscles. No. Like disgustingly. Um, and um, yeah, it's just, you know, the things, it's like, you know how they say the earlier you treat this, the better. It's like, I went eight to 10 years with this disease without anybody helping me, you know? Right. <laughs> and then it was just too late. You know, everything just came down. My brain bleed, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, I just wish that I, when I was complaining, I just wish that when we complain like that and we're saying something's wrong with us, they will listen to us instead of, okay, saying, uh, you have anxiety, you have depression, you have bipolar, there's nothing wrong with you. But other than that, I just, you know, I'm going through a grieving process because, like, I'm so glad I get to wear my face mask. <laughs> you know, That's the first time I've heard I'm that. like, I want to wear, please allow everybody to wear, bring back the face mask. Oh. No, it's funny you say that because someone said that to me. You look good in a face mask. I didn't know whether to take that as a compliment <laughs> or what, because you couldn't see your face. But yeah, I get what you're talking about. 
I could tell you stories about my grandfather, Jack, Jack. Uh, One of a kind. He had a, he had a, a, a soda shop at Fort Dix, New Jersey at the, you know, at the army base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so everybody. My, my son uh, got processed there. Um, and he, uh, him, my grandmother worked there and they had the shop and everybody knew that him, like my mom died when I was little. So I used to stay with them and we used to go and, uh, people would be like, Oh, you're Jack Brody's granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And so I have a step family. So they actually named my, my niece named her. They liked my grandfather so much. It wasn't their grandfather, but they liked him so much that they named their child Jack. Huh. Well, they use that name a lot in movies anyway. Yeah, Jack, Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack Reacher, yeah. Yeah. I, I like the Amazon reboot. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was good. So I wonder, the, does your microphone work yet, Linda? I'm just kind of curious because I can't hear you. You know, she can do the chat, can't she? Or is there no chat on here? No, there's a chat. I'll pull it nope, up. I don't hear you. Not yet. That's odd, huh? I think she I... can hear us. That's what I'm getting. Oh, I see. You're putting it up there. Okay. So, so Wendy, have you? Um, did you have a mental health professional counselor or? Yeah, I have two of them. I have a um, palliative care, which is a minister at the SAR clinic. And I also have a um, regular one. The regular one talks to me, you know, mainly about my intimacy, you know, whatever. My palliative one talks to me more about, you know, um, my anxiety, what they can do to help me, you know, um, as far as, you know, my star coin and stuff, but yeah. it's really hard because she says, well, I want to meet with you every two weeks, but they're so shorthanded that it doesn't work out that way. You know, we're in a, we're in a, we're in, um, a new era, this, the COVID era that's never going to go away and it's probably going to get worse one day that we'll never be able to see each other. So I don't know, you know, everybody's trying to work it out, but everything is so confusing. We all know how confusing it is. I don't like have to tell you, right. we all know what this is doing to each one of us. At, at least they authorized telehealth visits. That was like the best thing out of the pandemic. Yeah, I love it. I, I, I um, advocated for that. Mm -hmm. Cause, the, uh, the reason I was asking I it. is um, I, I know my counselor helped me go through the grief process. And I, I guess I had never really done it formally before, but there's very specific steps you should take and you know, it'll go at its own pace, but they can tell you what to look out for in each you know phase of negotiating or acceptance. Wow, or, really? Because yeah, talk to know, one of them a good about therapist. it. Like you get a good therapist. My my therapist is she's she's really um she was really hard she was really good during COVID but um because you know now she's moved up in her position it's been you know she hasn't been it, she doesn't know anything about sarcoid but that's why I go to the palliative care to talk about it. And she doesn't really know anything about sarcoid. You know how it is. The other thing is you could give um, Pat a call. She works yeah. one on one. Pat Hart. Oh, and yeah. She does that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she was like a health counselor. She's just a general oh. life coach. But she's got a lot of experience. And uh, the first couple of calls, we talked a lot she's about grief. Been, she's, yeah. Mm. And she's a nice lady. She is so nice. She is really, uh, she, you know, she's articulate. Yeah. And it, you was, guys it was funny. We had a lot in common. You, so, you know, the two of you should start a team together. <laughs> the Pat uh, and Kevin Sarcoid group. Cause it, pre it pretty much is on Monday. 
So Can Linda, the Jack, um, we're, we're talking about another support yeah. group. Um, it, it's for chronic conditions. So it's not just sarcoidosis, although there's a lot of sarcies on it. Um, but the woman who runs it has sarcoidosis and had to leave her career behind. And it, it was really impacted for a while and kind of similar journey, figured out the right foods and the right medicines to take and not take. And it's stable and she's living her life and um, she's very open and good listener. And um, it's like your own little counselor on on call. Hmm. Is she normally on this call? Uh, no, she hasn't come on this call. I should invite her. But um, I don't know what her schedule's like. But um, it, it's a similar thing. You do, she has a little different format. She opens it up with a quote. And, you know, did that bring anything out for you? What was that like? And um, then we just have round, round, round the table discussions on whatever topics come up. And... Then we wrap it out with an uh, inspirational quote. So that's nice. Well, Linda has a group too. What's that? Linda has a group too. Linda. Oh, is that the, um, I think I saw that. Yeah, she's it. got her own Sark thing online. That's the support place for sarcoidosis? Yeah. Yeah. I so. the, yeah. I, I was going to drop it on that, see if that's, um, worthwhile and linda's the same thing you know she she's um had a background in some sort of you know uh medical mental health kind of stuff and it got sarcoid but what what type of um sarcoid do you have jack um i went in and got the pet scan and it's uh I guess they're lesions from like in my lungs and down my back and stuff like that. Bones. That's where I'm, I'm guessing that's why I'm hurting. But yeah. So I have lesions in my spine. Are they in your spine? Yeah. 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 So I was told that you can't do anything about that. I, I did treatment. I did treatments. I did the Remicade. I did, I did all the treatments. The presence presence will help me out a lot. Did you do the methotrexate? No, um, because um, I previously had cancer. They did not. Um, I actually had a, a, a HPV cancer, um, which is you know transmitted through, you know, sex. We know intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so. Um, they did a lot of studies on me to see if that's what caused my sarcoid at the area hospital that I was at. But it went into my back. It went into it went into my brain, and the prednisone knocked it out of my brain. But I had a brain bleed. I was, you know, that's pretty serious. Um, but the lesions in my back, it's in the inside. I don't know if it's on the outside. It depends where in your back it is. Is it in your T? Is it in your L? Is it? Well, it's on the skeletal part on the outside. Oh, well, that's, so that's on the bones. better than me. Yeah. So is it in the L? Is it in the L or the T? I, I don't know. Uh, they is it really the middle of your it. back, the top of your back, or the bottom? Well, it's all the way from my neck all the way down to the bottom. So okay. there's so about 20 of them right there. You have 20 of them, but they're on the outside. I believe so, yeah. So a lot of people that have them um, in the L spine can have it operated on, the lesions. I don't know if they've talked to you about that, mm -hmm. but you might. You might if you can walk, to... I would stay away from surgery. <laughs> yeah, but like the teeth spine where mine is and the inside of my spine, they can't operate on it. But um, the prednisone took a lot of the inflammation around. The inflammation is what gave me so much pain, you know, affected my whole back. Uh -huh. um, so um, if you have it up near your neck, you know, 
it's very painful. Um, I don't, I only have one lesion up in my back and it's very little up in the top near my neck. Um, so I'm really lucky like that. So one of the challenges, Jack, is that there's no good biomarkers for this disease. Mm -hmm. So like if you have, um, you know, cancer, you, you can usually do blood tests to see if you, know, you have elevated levels of this or that or whatever. Um, my blood work was consistent all the way up through getting on prednisone, then some things went haywire. Um, so like I was feeling awful and my blood works fine and now I'm feeling better. My blood works still fine. Mm -hmm. So it, it, they don't have a good mechanism to say your disease is active or it's not active. It's how you feel. Exactly. Yeah. And it's really about listening to your body and taking those cues and deciding, you know, how to manage the, the course of, you know, the treatment. Yeah. Well, so the reason why they have you on methotrexate is because it's pretty serious that you have it in your spine. You know that, right, Jack? No, they actually have not told me anything. I've, so I went to the, I switched from the guy that actually found it in my lungs to this, this uh, supposed uh, leader in whatever, sarcoidosis at the University of Arizona. And I met with him. And he put me on uh, prednisone. That and that's basically all we've done. I talked. Oh, so you're on that. How many milligrams are you on? Well, I was on the. I was. I think I was forty. Yeah. And then I weaned myself down. I mean, I gained like probably forty pounds. I think easy. But I, I basically weaned myself off it. Called them up. Told them. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure this is really working. Or and how would I know? So you, we never really so found you, out. So you weaned yourself, knowing that you had the lesions in your back, you weaned yourself off of the prednisone, like yes. within weeks that you got it or like? No, I was on it probably for a couple months. And then I started to drop the dosage. I, I wrote him and told him, tried calling, but you can't get a hold of these guys. So I wrote on their whatever site that, look, I'm going to start reducing this down. So I reduced it down to finally I was at like five milligrams or something. And uh, finally he responded back, said, well, you can stay on five if you want, as long as you want. And, but if you can control it or whatever with your pain pills or whatever, because I'm on, I've been taking hydrocodone for like 20 years. So I control the pain with that. But that's not so what, what I want to do. Well, you've been on hydrocodone for another back problem? Yeah. Well, for overall pain and a back problem. So in my forties oh. is when they, it's, it is when I noticed how much pain I was in. And then that's the doctor started giving me that. So, so you, you, other than the pain, does sarcoidosis affect your life at all? Well, well it's fatigue pain. Yeah. I mean, it's, I had some rashes that okay. now I haven't gotten oh, back. Man. Well, I was coughing and stuff, but, uh, as long as I take the hydrocodone, I mean, like I took up golf after I retired and that's about five miles a day. And I, I walk it and play it and stuff like that. I do feel a lot of pain the next day, but I just pop some more hydrocodone and I'm fine. But and I, I tried to golf yesterday, just in the backyard, took about 20 swings with the club yeah. and I, now my back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I, it was uh, so painful trying to get that club up in the air and, and like turn. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I can't believe you've been on, on hydrocodone for 20 years. Yeah. That's, that is a long time to be on it such is. a heavy drug. But you're basically but it, it, probably addicted. Oh, absolutely. I, I know that. Um, and you would probably have to go to a hydrocodone clinic to get off of it. Right. Which you might want to think about doing because it's that drug could end your life. Well, as long as there isn't anything that's going to take care of the pain I'm in, and if I don't take it, I'm not going to get off it. 
because otherwise well, I'm sure I'm because they're feeling that. good you know but i mean like they don't have anything I, to, to replace it so there's no point in, well, in getting into it they never said, well, let's do Remicade. I mean, you need to go to a start clinic. This is, uh, so the guy that I'm seeing is this highly regarded sarcoidosis uh, doctor, but I don't think he's all that great personally. I mean, he's an Indian from India and I can barely understand him anyway. Yeah. You know, it's what so funny Ram because. What is Remicade? You said that. Okay, it's a so biologic. What? Remicade is, there's two drugs that are used for neuro, and it's either Remicade um, or prednisone, and sometimes they do the methotrexate. Um, so the Remicade is an infusion. They put a line into your vein, and they pump in rat antibodies in your body. That's what it is. Um, which takes the inflammation out. It. I had the sarcoid in my brain and it totally took it out because, you know, your lymph nodes are connected to the spine, the brain. Usually a lot of times when you have it in your back, it goes into your brain. Um, but I'm lucky I didn't, a lot of people die when they have a brain bleed. I mean, it's, neurosarcoid is nothing to play with. No. You know, um, and to have those lesions on your back, their spine, which makes, you know, it's your motor of your body. It's like, you don't, you're, you don't want to play with your heart. You don't want to play with your lung. You don't want to play with your spine or brain, you know, it's just the whole. Um, but so they do these infusions and they start you off basically every two weeks for about a month or two months. And then they put you to four weeks and then they do it to two weeks. But I ended up being um, allergic to it. So um, they also had me on an antiviral, which helped me big time. They also had me on a, um, you know, on the prednisone. The prednisone and the antiviral knocked it out of my lungs. I had it in my lungs and knocked it out. But they didn't play around. When they saw, you know, when I was in the hospital, they said, we're putting you on extensive treatment because we don't think you're going to make it. That's what they basically told me. Like, uh, I couldn't understand even what sarcoid meant. And they said that. And then, so basically I, um, had, they made me write my will out and that was, you know, thinking I was going to die and everything. And I'm here now. So, um, you just got to keep on fighting every day and, um, whatever works for you works for you. But, even though they, you know, call prednisone a tic tac pill, sometimes it can really help. Even though it destroyed the rest of my bot, you know, my muscles and everything, it took it out of my brain and, and out of my lungs. Yep. With the antiviral. Because I couldn't breathe. I just would go up the stairs and I was like, <gasps> and my oxygen level was like really low. And I, it was the, Scariest thing. They had the COVID back then. You're not oh, doing it. Sorry, I got it. I got. Know. He's he's listening. I didn't even know he's listening. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah I, was the, I was looking for the picture. Who else is talking over here? I don't see another picture of someone. This is my <laughs> my beautiful partner Paul <laughs> in his dent. <laughs> got it. So but, Jack, but, have have you? Um, looked at diet at all i thought about it um, what about it yeah thought about it i mean i eat a lot of candy and I'm probably that's probably causing inflammation i mean right before this meeting here i had a box of m m okay so, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that might be part of part of it i mean that it causes it, inflammation Inflammation is fed by numerous things. One of them is sugar. Uh, another is uh, other carbohydrates. So the more processed the food is, the less chance that it's going to be good for you. That's, I, I think I live on that stuff. 
So. I know. I, I did too, and I think that's kind of why I ended up where I am. Uh, it's a long, slow, insidious setup process, but you know, f for me, I I completely changed my diet um, the minute I put prednisone in my mouth. Um, I'd already started doing some research, and um, you know, the, the big things for me was so I, I'd already kind of. 10 years ago, kind of made some life changes, was eating better, but wasn't to the point where organic was worthwhile. Mm, it is. Uh, you know, range fed or uh, grass fed, you know, didn't matter to me. You know, I was an engineer. This is $3 a pound. This is six bucks a pound. It looks the same to me. Uh, so I, I really didn't care what I put in my body, and I definitely felt a long, slow decline. Um, so in, inflammation's the like the the key driver for this, uh, but so is stress. I mean, stress leads to inflammation. Um, mm. So you know, meditation, mindfulness can be helpful. Uh, it's supposedly really helpful for pain too. Um, but whole foods, um, more vegetables than meat. You know, I had to like invert my plate. I'd be like, give me a 60 ounce steak and a little tiny side of asparagus. I'm good. <laughs> um, so that's something to consider. The internet's full mm -hmm. of, you know, anti-inflammation protocols or um, the paleo diet. They're all in the same domain of like less processed food, less mm -hmm. sugar, no soda, things like that. And it, I, I tell you, I feel better now than I did five years ago before yeah. I had my last flare up. Um, so I, I think that's a that's a important thing in this disease is is diet. Okay, thanks um, for that. So just a, so I'm a chemical engineer, right? And I, I actually worked at the plant where they make Roundup. Oh yeah. Uh, we, oh we my God, it. that's what I used to use for my business all the time. And I swear that's what caused my everything. It, it, it does do bad things to your body. So the active ingredient in that is called glycophosphate. Oh, did you hear that? And uh, some of the companies we worked with, like DuPont and Dow Chemical, they shifted in the 90s into agrochemicals and seed production, and GMO. So they now have wheat, corn, barley, soy. You can spray Roundup directly on these plants, and they've been genetically engineered to tolerate it. Wow. Which is great. I mean, you can. Yeah. Can you genetically manage. engineer me like that? No. Why? It doesn't mean that you're not getting glycophosphate in the food. It means that your food isn't killed by the Roundup. All the other reeds around it are. So it improves yield. But the glycophosphate still gets in that food. And it is so inflammatory. And you can, you, if you're buying organic, you know that's not a potential issue. So and it's in our plastic you know, too. What's that? It's in our plastic, like our water bottles and stuff. Oh, uh, there, that's a, there's different chemicals. I mean, everything's made of chemical. Um, but yeah, the like bottled water, you're getting microplastics, and they don't know what that does. Um, that's a whole nother discussion. Welcome back, Karen. Hi, glad to be back. Sorry I was gone so long. Unexpected company. <laughs> uh, Linda, still no audio? Next time. Get your IT guys on that. <laughs> so, Karen, did you have any questions? No, the only thing you were talking about diet, food, the way we eat, the sarcoid specialist told me right off to get on, basically eat keto, 
um, Keto's very good. Office sugar yeah. and low sodium. And I started that mm -hmm. the day before I started on the prednisone. And I have been told, you know, oh, that I not if I gained weight, when I gained weight. And I have been lucky. I lost six pounds, but I have followed. I haven't. I mean, I have been so good about that food wise. And the only thing I see happening is I am getting a little bit of the moon face, but oh, well. Yeah, I got I got a little bit of that, um, but I actually lost 35 pounds. Yeah. From the date of the accident to, you know, sometime last year. I put a so couple I of them back. If but... we eat that way, we we don't have to fall in those numbers that we are going to gain weight and we are going to do this and that. I think, I think the, I, and I'm vegetarian and have been for 30 years, but I'm eating now, eating fresh fruit and fresh vegetables, none of the processed or canned or anything. Yeah. And it's made a huge difference in how I feel. Yeah. Did you say keto diet? Keto, keto diet. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Atkins diet. Mm -hmm. so I remember Atkins diet. Yeah, yes. Karen, you're eating meat now. You said you were you were a vegetarian, right? No, I, I'm. I just meant to say I have been vegetarian for thirty years, and no, I I still am vegetarian, and that makes it a you know a little bit different and it's remember kevin when you said the way you have to eat before the pet scan i had to eat meat the day before the pet scan i was like how am i gonna do this and they told me they said well we've never been asked this question before and i said well i'm asking you now and i chicken and the what i could eat the only thing i could tolerate was basically burned bacon so I cooked my bacon to a crisp. I ate a pound of bacon the day before my PET scan, and that was the first meat I had had since my 34-year-old son was born. <laughs> so wow. still vegetarian. So you, do you do meat products like cow, like cow milk? I do dairy, yes some i do not do eggs but even the doctor told me had to stay away from dairy as much as i can i do a little bit of cheese but i do almond milk you know i tend to go that way just because and now before i would do cereal uh, occasionally with just regular milk on it but now i'm doing all almond milk and almond butter instead of peanut butter and you know, it's you're talking a about whole, the almond milk. Think... I love, I love the almond milk, and I heard, you know, and when I take it, I feel so good. But they're telling. I was reading stuff how, like, in, you know, doctors tell me there's a lot of chemicals in almond milk. Is that true? I have no idea. The what I'm drinking supposedly is organic, if you can believe the labeling. Hmm. And it's, you know, bit it's more than then just the ones that come in the box. But I figure if I'm doing this, I better be doing hey, Paul, what can I can we get do. Organic one. Do we get organic? Yeah, we had good work. Oh, boy. It's always a learning experience. Thanks, Karen. You're welcome. Have you ever hmm. tried fasting? Hmm. No, doesn't work for me. Why? What about fasting? Um, it's really good for resetting your body, for um, controlling inflammation, and you don't have to suffer while you're fasting. You don't. So there, have to. there's an interesting book called Fast This Way by Dave so Asprey. Yeah. Wait a minute. And Let's it's it fast this way. Fast this way. You can get it on Amazon or on his website. He's a biohacker. He's oh. one of the original biohackers. And the whole idea behind fasting is to not eat carbs. And if, if you're truly fasting, then 
um, not consuming anything that's going to break your ketosis. So ketosis is the state of your body when you're in keto, uh, where you are burning fat, and the byproduct of the burning fat is the ketones, which can you know will show up in a blood test or a urine test, and they know you're in ketosis, which means you are burning fat for energy. Normally, you're burning sugar. Um, so my first journey into keto was probably 10 years ago. My older son decided he wanted to do a keto diet and he never cooked before. So we all decided we were going to go on a keto diet and it was great. I lost like 40 pounds and never felt better. Uh, and this inflammation that kind of set everything up miraculously disappeared. I was like, wow, that's weird. And just kind of made a note of it. And then, you know, 10 years later, I'm reading, a, you know, I listened to a blog by Dave Asprey, and he's talking all about intermittent fasting, which is kind of like the first step where you um, basically you don't eat breakfast, but you define an eating window. Say you want to do uh, 16 hours on, off and six hours or four hours on. Is that right? Is that 24? Uh, six hours, eight hours off. It'll be eight and 16, or you can do 10 and, you know, 14 and 10. But you basically restrict your eating window. And when you're not eating, you're drinking water. You can actually drink coffee. Um, you can actually put fats in your coffee, like butter, ghee, coconut oil. And you'll get energy. You wake your mind up, but it doesn't break your ketosis. So technically, you're still fasting. And I've been doing that for years. Um, do you so do the bulletproof? Excuse me. It's called bulletproof coffee, yeah. Isn't it the best? It is absolutely the best. And I don't so get good. hungry. Right, so I, I haven't been hungry in years because uh, I don't eat. What's the I'm bulletproof hungry. coffee? What's that? What is the bulletproof coffee? It is uh, coffee with butter and coconut oil and there's different variations of it you can use mct oil it's a little it's a processed coconut oil it has a, a better profile for your body if you believe dave and you can buy it right on his website <laughs> but it's um it's all about good fats and you know your your body is malleable and fasting is one of those things you can do to lose weight to you know, reduce some aches and pains, to control inflammation. Um, so that, that that's something uh, I've been doing for a while. I've done several multi-day fasts, and you really feel different coming out the other side. And considering we're all dealing with inflammation, uh, it's a very good, very potent uh, counter act or uh counterbalance to the inflammation the body our bodies don't seem to turn it off well and do you drink a lot of water very much like 128 yeah. ounces a day that's what i do huge um, difference cool. I, I usually count my coffee in there too so well, of course <laughs> that's that's up and beyond the coffee wow hey rick how are you I'm good. I just wanted legend. to stop by and uh, say hello to you guys. It sounds like you're having a great conversation here. Absolutely. We, uh, Rick is the founder of Ancan, or one of the founders, yeah. and was one of the first to bring virtual support groups to um, various causes. And we got tied up with sarcoidosis in here, and he's been generous to allow us to use this platform every month. Uh, Thank we, you, love, Ray. we love you guys. We love you guys. We just wish we had more. There was a time when we used to have a few more. So spread the word. Get them, bring them back. <laughs> bring them yeah, back. I, I mentioned we, to we, Linda that if we, Linda, if we don't have your email, you can send us the chat. Send, put it in the chat. Send it to me directly or to 
or to Kevin, and we'll make sure you get on the list to get a reminder for this meeting each month. So, welcome. Sorry, you're having trouble. But go back to your meeting. I'm just going to hang in for a few minutes, and then I got to run over to the caregivers. Ah, see you, Rick. Have a good one. I'll be here for a few. I'll stay for just a little while. And if anybody wants to get hold of me for any reason, I'll put my um, I'll put my email address in the chat window. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. So you can send me. Hopefully, you guys are all registered to get the reminders. I hope so. If not, and you want to be, send it to me, and we will put yeah, you we on have the Jack's reminders. email chat. Karen, do you need a reminder on this? Yes, I just put my email in. We will take care of it. I will do it Thank right you. now, Karen. Thank you so much. You're the best, Rick. My pleasure. So, how did you guys hear about this? Jack, you were saying uh, someone in your care center? <clears throat> my original doctor, uh, the one that found me that I had this when I was in my 40s, um, I went off, got a job somewhere else and left, came back here to Tucson, and uh, he became a concierge doctor. So, um, Hold so on a minute. Hold on a minute. Are you a patient? Are you a patient of Stevie Wool's? Yes, I was. <laughs> yes, and now I can't get back in. I will have a word with him. Yeah, he is a very. So I live in Tubac right now, but I moved oh, back you? here. You're just and, down the road. And um, and Steve and I go back to 1983, and um. And Cindy, could rest her soul, and they were right. very, very, and they still are. He still is a very close friend of mine. Well, so, we were we were close, but when I left, we just kind of fell apart. But he was my doctor for almost, I think, 10, 20 years before that. But best. now you now you can't even get to talk to him because he kind of has this lady that's part of his practice that is the gatekeeper, I guess. Firewall. I, yeah, like a <laughs> firewall. And so I, I said, well, just let him know that I want to come back. And I never really got an answer, but that's how I found out about this site. She kind of told me, the gatekeeper person told oh, me. Oh, because I, yes, Linda, you spoke Linda. to Linda. And, and yes. Linda's, and Linda's, brother, Linda's <laughs> brother-in-law used to attend this group. Yes. That's how she knew, knows about it. That's exactly right. So tell I'll Steve. tell him. Yeah. I, I have to I have to I have to get hold of him. I'll tell him, put your last name in the chat window or something for me and it I'll is. say, take care of this man. Already. Yeah, good. That'd be <laughs> so, great to get back. He was such a good that, doctor that basically he would call you at nighttime around eight around nine o'clock, ten o'clock see how are you doing or whatever he'd scare the crap out of you because you weren't expecting a call at 10 at night i don't know he's um he's unbelievable he the, he's the best um i i would have to say he's the best internist i've ever known he's just a brilliant diagnostician he yeah he's so, the one that found it so yeah i'd be surprised. really appreciate that if you could get me back into that I don't know that I can, but I will mention it to him, Jack. Yeah, with, give it a shot. With the greatest of pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. I Small can't world. believe this. Here I am, <laughs> and Stevie pops up. <laughs> Small world. <laughs> yeah, I got my name up in it. My wife's saying, get your name in the chat. <laughs> yeah, so you can put his email there. in. I guess your first, last name is your email. Yeah, Jack Dog Newman. The only reason Dog is there is because I volunteer at Pima Animal Care Center here, in Tucson. So, so that's not your middle name? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I end up having to say what it is because I've had people raise their eyebrows like, why is Jack Dog Newman? You know, what are you? 
a rapper. Jack dog. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you, um, Kevin, if you send that to me, I'll make sure Jack's in and I'll, and I'll have a little word with my man and tell him he needs to stretch a little bit, but I, I can't guarantee anything. <laughs> no, I know. I know that. I appreciate it though. But I'm happy to mention it to him. Thank you. Yeah. I know. Um, when I was doing a lot of research, um, one of the pulmonologists was with, um, University of Louisville or something like that. Uh, I don't know, down south. And he was giving a presentation on sarcoidosis. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting guy. And then once I started the prednisone, like I had like this mind melt. <laughs> it just went crazy. And, you know, so now I've got like, you know, heart issues and lung issues and fatigue and mania, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I, I, I don't feel, I don't trust myself to manage this. So I was looking at the sarcoidosis, uh, Stop Sarcoidosis website, the FSR. And, you know, they had a, a list of all the clinics. And Jefferson University, which was like, I was, my pulmonologist was in there. Um, they were advertising their new sarcoidosis program. So in the middle of the pandemic, I call him up. I'm like, uh, oh, yes, hang, hang on a moment. And, and the, the director will be on on with you in a, in a moment, like just like that. And we set up a, a time for a telehealth visit and then, you know, whatever. But it was the guy that I was watching on the YouTube video, Dr. Perez. <laughs> I was like, wow. Amazing. Crazy coincidences. We've been uh, good friends ever since. All right, what else we got? That one. I'll tell you one thing that I've got just before we go, which is that. Um, we have a site, um, there's a site called Great Nonprofits, and every year they ask for testimonials. And when you get a certain number of testimonials, we, um, we get a, um, a little badge that we put on the website. And um, so if you feel like giving us a testimonial, if you go to our website, ancan.org, and press on testimonials, you'll find something that says share your story and you can write anything you like in there we hope it's good but sometimes it ain't so good so uh we'll we'll let you uh we'll let you decide but um we've we've got a lot of endorsements from our prostate cancer guys we've got a couple from our blood cancer people but we're trying to get some some people from some of the other groups that we're setting up to to endorse okay. us yeah we're happy to do that for you right Sure. So um, I'll put the um, I'll put the link in the chat window for you. That 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 will make life easier. Um, it's right here. There you go. So it's it's oh, it, okay. it, it, it it's it's right there. And um, and Jack, if you I think you probably sent your info to um, to Kevin. Kevin, if you can either send it to me or um, email yeah, it to in me. The chat. You want to just move it into a, an email? I thing? don't see it in my chat. Oh. Uh, it must have oh, come it just... Was private, I see it. Yeah, it just came to you. So if you just send that to me, then I will... Um, I'll make sure Jack gets in. Got it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Well, I the, after this terrific coincidence, and I love these types of coincidences. Where, where where do you actually live, Jack? You know where Star Pass is. Yeah. Down, yeah, I'm just a little bit uh, a little bit north of Star Pass in an area over there. Okay. And, uh, so, uh, 
Yeah, it'd be it'd be great to see him. I I know we were young when he was my doctor. I mean, we were all young. <laughs> And then uh, you, it's funny how you now, and me both, boy. You, huh? you and me, you and me yeah. both. You know, I used to. I, I I was very friendly with Steve, with Steve and Cindy, and in fact, I emigrated my dad in 1986, and he became pretty close with them. And then I left around 87, 88, and they really took care of my father. And the only reason I brought my father over was because Steve said he would he would take care of him. And yeah. my dad passed away in 1990, but um, Steve was just incredible. And Steve and Cindy were really incredible and they just really took care of him. And so, so they're yeah, very he's... special. They were they very are. special. The, he, when I moved away, he had just moved to his new office. I mean, after he went through all that crap with the old Pueblo medicine, yeah. or whatever it was called. So, but his, his practice was thriving. I mean, so I, I'm glad it worked out for him. Yeah. And, and I'm just going to respond to Wendy. Yeah. Wendy, it takes you directly to the great nonprofit page and you put share your story. But if you look, you'll see that that website says, um, Ancan foundation at the top, that's our page on their site. So that yeah. link takes you straight to their page. So all right well hopefully i'll run across you again jack come down to two back we'll, we'll have well, a cup of coffee all right that sounds good i'll you know send you a message send me a message you got my email you know where i am linda knows linda knows where i am she's a good friend of she's a good friend of mine too so, okay, so she knows great. where to find me Okay, yeah, so, so Ricky, great. I see it. The, the link takes you to the top level. If you search for ANCAN, then there's a place you can say write a story. Yeah, if you, um, the story. link, I'm, I'm, I'm looking right here. The link takes you to great nonprofits. And if you, oh, I thought that link took you straight to our website. Oh, it take you to write a review. Uh, okay. We'll, so we'll have to fix that. We'll have to fix that link. It was taking us straight there, but we'll fix that link too. But thank you. Yeah, if you search for ANCAN, you'll 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 find us. It, the the link should be ANCAN Foundation, not Answer Cancer. So if you take that Answer Cancer out. Oh out. yes, because we just changed the name on the website. I will. Okay. We'll get that fixed. Thank you. Because the other day it was working fine. We'll get that fixed. I will ask. I'll get Alexa to fix that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All Goodbye, right. everybody. See you, Rick. Bye. 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 I think we're about ready to wrap it up as well. Okay. Thank you.